Hello, and welcome to another episode of Crisis in the Kremlin. Last time we left off, we finished the pre-game events, and now we're finally in the present day. 1985. Let's take a quick look through the map and see what we can. Sudan, its approval level means that it could flip back to blue at any point. For red countries, its approval level is used to see if they flip. For blue countries, it's revolution level. There are different conditions for different countries. For a lot of them, it's just a matter of providing uh, support for the revolution, and then military and civil aid until they're completely loyal, because they're developed enough that they finally see the benefits that partnership with the Soviets can provide. And for the blue, of course, well, they're just, they're just the puppets of the capitalist swine. So if we look around, different countries have different disapprovals. For a lot of them, this is zero, because we've only just started. Others, like Tunisia, have 35, Sudan has 90, Bolivia has 40, and as you can see, with something like Cuba, or India, or Burma, or Egypt, there aren't the same diplomatic options. This is because for these countries, we either need to do things in events, or we need, uh, yeah, I think it's pretty much just events that would do it, or certain actions that I don't really know about. So let's go ahead and let Sudan fall. Because I think it's a bit too much to just try to keep them all together. And that's the thing about this. You have to make sacrifices. Because as it stands, you are kind of overstretched. Right now we're providing military aid to Bolivia and Tunisia to keep the disproven low. But that's really a temporary solution. Because we don't have an infinite amount of power for our army. More importantly, we don't have an infant supply of soldiers, contrary to what you might believe as being Russia. Now, let's actually look at our science tab. You can see, we have automation, which has for potentially planned economy, and leads to OGAS. We also have the uh, ability for the KGB to get greater intel on people. We can also choose our space future. Uh, this little hourglass means that if we choose something, then it takes a long time before we're able to go down the other path. Because we've funneled so many resources down one thing. So space future, we either go and try to set up a moon base, and then land on Mars, or to have s just satellites with lasers and nuclear weapons in space. For agriculture, we can try to bring new land and cultivation, or we can just improve what we have with genetics. For military tech, we can have bigger is better, just have more troops in there, or we could go with an elite army, where we might not have as many troops as down the left, and as you can see, we can only choose one or the other but we would have a greater army in terms of quality. The Atom, of course, just developing proton colliders and then eventually get to warheads. So I think we're going to go ahead and just go a little bit into these. We can only pick the first ones. We will go ahead, build spacecrafts, and I believe Go ahead and with the proton collider. This episode is really just going to be looking at a lot of things, so if you don't want that, don't watch this episode. Skip to the next. 
because there are a lot of little tabs to go through. So we went through research. Council, we can see that the council of the CPSU, the central committee, has several factions in it. The Trotsky scum, the Stalinists, which we are going to try and have take power, the conservatives, the moderates, and then the reformers and the liberals. The reformers and liberals, because they're red, that means they are both currently banned. You cannot be openly one of these things. Now, if we somehow unban the party, they would gain traction because some people that might say that they are conservative might actually be liberal and they just don't want to say it because of course it is banned. Now if we click Stalinist, we get a little check here. And this will mean that every turn we spend political power in order to get the Stalinist more in the Congress. And depending on what faction is in the Congress, we can get more uh, options. Like for example, the liberals and moderates, they really want to just have peace with the West. You can do stuff like sell technology in order to get money, which can be useful. For the Stalinists and the Trotskyists, I suppose, you can support left terrorism. You can also apparently do that with liberals, huh? If you support left terrorism, that gradually reduces their stats. And we're gonna look at the stats in this thing. Jesus. So yes, this is where we get a lot of different values. Where we see where our nation actually stands. Medicine, level of education, ecology, the loyalty of various groups, the power of the KGB and how high our op the opposition to us is. Uh, low freedom, quite low. Liberalization, also low, but not not too low. There's a large availability of education. Citizen income and medicine availability, pretty high. Luxuries, not so much. Law and order, all the way through. We have a lot of essential commodities, houses, and employment. And if we go here, we can see the agricultural sector has a lot of strength. The services and light industry, however, are low, which is why I gave a budget to them. The MIC and hard industry are both very powerful. Total industry power is middling. We want it to be probably to about 8 or 9 bars. That's when the game says that it's good enough, because once you get to 10 bars, you want to be careful. Because if you have too much funneled into one program, then the corruption increases. Because of course, the budget isn't actually spent for what it's meant for, and people just end up pocketing it. So, for whatever reason, we also have the intellectual loyalty that shows the industry. So, fulfillment, cultural contentment, unanimity, those are just a bunch of different stats to tell you. How content are people right now? And now we finally get to what I was talking about. The USA. There's the army power, the economy, and the level of contentment among their citizens. Very high at the start of the game, because all of them are indoctrinated by the filthy and pure scum that rules them. However, if we support left terrorism, gradually these numbers will decrease. If they decrease enough, however, then they'll try to recover by exploring the third world, and these will gradually build back up. If we convert the third world to the point where they cannot do this, and they can't build back up, they'll progressively weaken and eventually collapse. So that is the long-term goal. These will have various stats like forgery in the plans, number of army and ICBM, which if you don't know is intercontinental ballistic missiles, and the total military power. Number of armies is important, you can't give military aid, 
if there aren't enough soldiers to send aid. Even if we have a lot of equipment to send, and even if the power of our army is high, if we don't actually have soldiers, we can't do it. Down here you can see exports that we give, competitiveness, and corruption. All rather low. We want export and competitiveness to be high, obviously. Corruption, we want to stay at around here. At most, we want to be three or four. That's all of that. So, I will go ahead and just go over things as they're important. Please, let's see, is there anything that's actually The answer is not really. Right here, we have a little kind of abstraction of the economy, I guess. It tells you different things like some of the expenses, subsidizing certain industries, uh, how much administration takes, how much foreign trade takes, how much corruption is eating at us. And we also have our income from taxes, exporting goods, from the oil trade, and then others. I'm not quite sure what others are, it's just other stuff. So what I just did was decrease taxes because as we have a centrally planned economy, we already have pretty much all of the money. And so paying wages to workers and then taking that back doesn't really make sense. Lower taxes also means that uh, the individual republics are happier because the citizenry obviously doesn't have to pay as many taxes. So that's kind of training the economy for stability. Similar to bribing the officials that you saw before. Speaking of bribing officials, you need that for political opponents. I believe that would improve corruption, so I, I'm not going to do that. We can also see that there are the leading politicians. Yeltsin, who was the... He was honestly the guy who just formally dissolved the Soviet Union, and so we want nothing at all to do with him. Uh, I don't know about most of these people. I know Romanov, if I'm right, he was a general and so he has a fair bit of power now, he's very supportive of Stalin, so we're gonna probably want him to be our second command when the event comes up. Gorbachev, strongish, not quite as strong as Romanov, and he is more of the moderate. Gromyko, uh, also mo or Gorbachev is more of a reformist, I suppose. And Gromyko is the moderate or conservative, I believe he's moderate, and he was just one of the oldest members in the Central Committee. And when, I forget who it was, either died or resigned, he put forward Gorbachev as who should be the next leader, and because he was so influential, as you can see, a 7 out of 10, he was able to just, because of that, make it unanimous that Gorbachev was elected. Finally, there's Grishin, I don't know anything about them, just like how I don't know who Ligachev you are. We put pressure on all these people. I have no idea what that does. I produce a power. We want to keep anyone from becoming too powerful because that means that they could potentially have a coup put on us, try to take power for themselves. So that was a whole lot, and honestly, it took most of the episode. And as we look here, what we want to do, I believe, is just support one, support one country. Socialism in one country. So like for example, support Tunisia. Provide civil aid to them. Get them up to a hundred. If you do that, then again, as I said, they will stop becoming disloyal. And if you have the 
Information Information Bureau, mutual aid between allies. If the uh, development level gets above a certain point, you can actually start extracting resources from the other countries. And that provides a big boost to your economy. So that's something we want to shoot for as early as possible. But right now, I think we're done. Next episode, we're actually going to do stuff.